Hi, hello, UST. Thank you for inviting me over to become one of your speakers for today's event. I am Rem Lampa, or also known as Kuya Dev. So for today, I'll be talking about career shifting into the tech industry. I'll be honest. When I was first approached to do this talk, medyo nagtaka ako kasi career shifting yung topic, but the intended audience are computer science students and IT students. So, pakiramdam ko medyo nagkaroon ng, ano, ng misalignment doon. But, just the other day, I realized that it made sense because being a student and being a professional are very different things. Transitioning from the academe to the industry is sort of career shifting na rin. So with that in mind, although the talk is geared towards people who have no or zero technical background or tech, uh, tech background. It also applies to all of you students. So with that in mind, you know, um, let's proceed with the talk. So for this afternoon, I divided my talk into four sections or four parts actually three parts lang because the fourth um, part is for question and answer so for my the first part would be about the history of self-learning or quote-unquote career shifting in the tech industry the second part, we will explore uh, uh, the, the, the different factors that's currently driving the trend of career shifting into tech. And the third part, we will discuss some statements and determine which of them are truths and which of them are myths. So before I proceed, let me just tell you a bit about myself. So I am Rem. I am known as Kuya Dev Online. I am the founder of Tech Career Shifter Philippines. And currently, as my day job, the one that pays the bills, I am the lead JavaScript developer or lead JavaScript engineer uh, at Prospel, which is an Australian startup. I will introduce Prospel later uh, at the end of the talk. I am also, because this, uh, this is a talk about career shifting, syempre dapat yung speaker nyo career shifter then. So I am a career shifter. I was an electrical engineer for almost a decade. And I am now, I have been now uh, a web developer for five years now. So I am passionate about tech startups, collaborative and inclusive culture, and community building. So this passion has translated into founding of Tech Career, Sh Career Shifter Philippines. And also I started a podcast called Kuya Dev Did Bits in which I share more of these insights. I say one hour is really, really short to discuss this stuff. So yeah, I, I maintain the podcast wherein I share my, 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 my thoughts and insights about tech, career shifting, career in general, and you know, uh, positive community building. So speaking of community building, 
Aside from being the founder of Tech Career Shifter Philippines, I am also the community manager of Free Code Camp Manila and ReactJS Philippines. Some fun facts about me. I'm very failure prone. Ito, hindi ko kailangan pinagkakaila. Medyo pinagmamayabang ko ng halat. <laughs> Ito eh, parang when I was in college, um, in my second year, I was kicked out of the Ateneo Engineering Program. And right after that, I tried to, you know, muntik na ako maging growling tiger. I tried to apply sa UST after being kicked out. But I was rejected. Um, because, you know, dami kong bagsak eh. <laughs> uh, so, not only that, my first rejection in the love department, yung unang nagbasted sa akin, was Atomasian. So, kung titignan nyo, dami kong galit sa UST, no? <laughs> but no, uh, I'm, I'm only kidding. Um, I love UST. Except pagka you up, uh, magkalaban tayo. <laughs> Mas uh, either Ateneo ko or uh, UP or FEU. <laughs> so, ayun, you know. I also um, tried to start a couple of startups before, which both both, fail, both both failed. And I'm currently in the works of trying to build another one. Bakit ko sinabi yung, ano, yung failure prone na yan? Gusto ko lang siguro i-highlight na despite, you know, undergoing those failures, going through those very, very hard failures, I'm okay. You know, ito nga, nakapagsalita ako sa, sa harap nyo ngayon, di ba? As a speaker. So, that's another topic, but, you know, Failures in life, they teach you a lot. Another fun fact about me, um, I went to 10 academic institutions and counting because uh, feeling ko, di pa ako tapos mag-aral eh. Parang, I love learning. So, that included, you know, Ateneo, UP, FEU, TIP, Mapua, and others. So, let's explore muna yung history ng self-learning sa tech. So, I call this the new old tech world order. Because dati pa, even before masulat yung first line of code, ang dami ng self-learners sa tech. So, for those who don't know uh, this woman, this is Ada Lovelace. She is attributed as the first programmer in the history of technology and computer science. I, 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 um, tawag dito? Um, I consider her as the as a as a career shifter or as a, a self learner because hindi naman talaga siya computer scientist or programmer. He, she was a mathematician and a writer. And the first algorithm that she wrote, she wrote it at a time na wala pa yung computer na mag nung, nung algorithm niya. So, sobrang galing niya na parang gumawa siya ng, ng algorithm, ng code, na wala pa yung yung machine na mag ng code niya, di ba? Sobrang galing. Pero ito nga, she learned it on her own. Na wala pang computer na <laughs> paglalagyan. Sobrang amazing. So, you know, yun nga, yung sabi ko, even before the first, uh, first computer was even, or the first line of code was even written, may mga lag self-learn na, di ba? Or, even before programming was invented. So these are I uh, are the women that I I consider the first or the early career shifters in the history of programming and uh, and tech. 
on the left are the women in the 1940s i forgot their names i don't i don't really memorize names but they were here they are illustrated as programming eniac and they were uh they are among the, they are considered among the first programmers ever and sila ren tinuruan lang nila sarili nila magprogram and this was at a time na wala wala yung mga lalaki they were all off in world war 2 you know? so they needed people to fill in and uh, program eniac i think this is eniac or eniac 2 but uh these these women are what they called human uh, computers because yung ginagawa nila sa trabaho nila is meron silang machine parang mga calculator and they manually compute using those machines yung mga mga complex na computations mathematical computations and yun nga dahil nga kulang sa tao kulang sa mga lalaki uh, at that time tinap sila to operate enyak and on the right uh, photo are ito ito mag- magandang ano to nasa Netflix to eh napakagandang movie it's about you know the same story uh, they are the women behind you know uh, programming the, the 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 machine that helped the United States win the the space race so yun nga sila ganun din they were human computers or human calculators and natakot sila kasi may dumating na na, na computers tapos feeling nila baka mapalitan sila ng computers na yun eh nung panahon na yun binili yung computers na yun ng NASA wala nakakaalam paano sila yung i-program so may ilan sa kanila na yun nga inaral din nila paano i-operate yung 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 computer and how to code that computer and they became the first programmers for that particular machine so off the off to ano uh, time travel tayo off to to this world so what do the numbers say actually self learners are the silent majority in the tech industry sabi nga rito sa mga articles na nagather ko dito sa nakalimutan ko pa na TNW over 65% of new developers are self-taught and yung sa sa survey ng hacker rank about one third ng ng mga survey nila are purely self-taught didn't even go to school they didn't even have a degree in tech to get into tech and again uh, in another article two out of three developers are self-taught the survey nila ng 50,000 plus coders so it's it's actually the norm it's a silent norm uh, norm hindi lang masyadong pinag-uusapan So he, th- these are the list of self-taught programmers. And mabibigat sa mga pangalan nito. Um, I would like to really highlight na lang siguro si Dan Abramov kasi siya lang si- dito yung hindi gaano siguro ang sikat. But if you're if you are uh, a Twitter user and you are into tech Twitter, siguro kilala mo si Dan Abramov. He is a self-learned career shifter then. And he invented Redux. I don't know if people uh, or if you are all familiar with that library. So he invented Redux and it's it was it was adopted by a lot of front-end engineers who are working with React as a, as a state management layer for React. And eventually, inabsorbed siya ng ano, inabsorbed siya ng React, ng React team sa Facebook. 
no someone who didn't have a degree in tech purely self learned nagawa yon and just a couple of years ago nag twitch eh, na more than half nung react team sa facebook walang degree sa tech sa cs or it wala silang background marami rin karamihan din sa kanila self learned so you know that's mind blowing nung nalaman ko to So, what are the current factors driving the trend? Kasi medyo parang nagiging matunog ngayon yung career shifting eh. From a lot of other industries, other careers, talagang naiintay sila ngayon lumipat into tech. So, I want to highlight here a, a really big problem that's plaguing the tech industry the global tech industry is that sobrang laki ng 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 demand for tech talent but the supply is very little not lethal para nakakamatay little <laughs> so the global competition for tech talent is really fierce so hindi ko na i-discuss maraming articles about this you can just research on google Ito more on the personal um, reasons na natatanggap ko from people who are trying to shift careers. Which is, ito rin yung naging uh, reason ko, basically. Um, so, tech is known for having progressive work, work cultures. Yung um, karamihan dyan, parang flexi time, work from home, um, work from anywhere uh, yung mga tumatanggap ng career shifters this is very uh, very ano eh, very uh, prominent nga sa tech eh, na they don't care kung may degree ka or or kung ano yung mga certificate mo basta you can prove that you can do the work number two, hindi naman natin mapapagkakaila sobrang lucrative talaga ng ng tech industry. Siguro hindi sa simula, but eventually, mabilis yung ano, mabilis yung acceleration ng ng ano rito, ng financial gain. The third re reason is marami sa atin dissatisfied sa previous career nila. And admittedly, 10 years in engineering, I was really burnt out nung nung industry ko. So, let's move on to the uh, meat ng talk. Ko. So, here are 15 statements that we'll explore. What's the real deal nga ba talaga sa career shifting? So, ito, kanina ko pa nababanggit eh. A CS or IT degree is a hard requirement in tech. Meaning na talagang non-negotiable siya. Dapat dapat may degree ka para makapasok sa tech. Is it a truth or a myth? Obvious naman na from my previous slides na hindi siya hard requirement. Nakakatulong siya, lalo na kung maganda yung program na napasukan nyo. Siguro UST, na? Okay, okay tayo dyan, di ba? <laughs> um, kung maganda yung program nyo, most likely makakatulong siya sa na makapenetrate maka ka sa tech industry. But it isn't a guarantee currently, hindi na. I mean, may mga, may mga kwento, kwento dyan, maraming kwento dyan about tech graduates, IT and CS graduates na kung ano lang yung nagiging trabaho, na hindi related. Actually, okay lang kung hindi related, basta, ano, di ba? basta maganda, maganda yung, maganda yung bayad. But a lot of them end up, you know, 7-Eleven or uh, sales lady, which is very sad. Sana, uh, siguro naman hindi mangyayari sa inyo yun because UST has a very good program, uh, I believe. 
But keep that in mind na although may degree ka, it doesn't really mean anything. What's very important is what you learned with that uh, with 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 in college or while you were self learning. Yun yun yung talaga yung ano. Yun yung yung importante. You need to show the recruiters na hey, I can do this. So another statement: Tech certificates certificates are very important. Sobrang prevalent to sa mga students na narinig ko. And even career shifters na ano, self-learned. Na parang nag-hoard sila ng certificates. Again, um, it's a myth. Sort of. Because may mga certificates talaga na kailangan. Like, you know, Cisco, um, AWS, you know, cloud, cloud certificates. Although, hindi rin medyo may gray area doon but you know yung mga importante is the learning the skills that you acquire when you were pursuing that certificate and dami ko na na interview ako mismo nag-interview ako ng mga applicants eh and dami ko na na interview na may degree may certificates punong-puno yung resume nila and when i ask them the very basic questions like You know, if you're familiar with Angular, I ask someone. Uh, so you learned Angular. What version? Because may pagkakaiba yun yung Angular one sa Angular two, eh. And he could he couldn't even answer. So, man, did you really make the effort to to learn what's what's important, or were you, were you just focused on getting that certificate? You know. Manage your priorities. No? Certificates, diplomas, that they're okay. But if you can't back them up, they're worthless. They're just pieces of paper. The hardest thing to, to do in tech is to get that first job. This is a hard truth. Diba? Na, 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 na banggit ko kanina. That's, it's that There's a really huge shortage in tech talent. But ironically, sobrang hirap makapasok pag if, if it's your first job. The entry level market is very competitive, which is sobrang sobrang ironic nga eh. Uh, I myself I don't understand this, but bakit ganun? And personally, I take advantage because kung sobrang bigat ng requirements ng mga ibang companies, that means na marami akong makukuhang talent dyan without even exerting much effort. And uh, so far in my five years of uh, being in tech, hindi ako nahihirap pa mag-recruit. But, yun nga, this is, this is a sad reality na the first job is always the hardest to get. kahit na college graduate ka man, and most especially, pagka career shifter ka, na walang tech background. I need to learn how to code to land a role in tech. This is a myth. You, need, you don't need actually to learn how to code. There are a lot of roles in tech na hindi kailangan magsulat ng code. Like design, QA, Um, project management, <laughs> excuse me, even, you know, tools like no code or WordPress. Although WordPress may may onting code pagka gusto mong i-manipulate yung, yung, yung plugins or whatever. But a lot of roles in tech don't really need, don't really need people to code. So this is a huge myth. The resume is the most effective way to get a job in tech. Truth or myth? This is now a myth. Because everybody's doing this, you know. At pagka marami kayong ginagawa ito, 
of course, ang laki ng competition. Sandibo kayo for one for one position. It's going to be very hard. And usually, yung mga this is not a knock against the human resources or HR, but yung HR madalas parang ano lang eh, uh, dinadaan lang lahat, lahat ng resume na yan. So, ang late ng chance na makapasok sa particular company, pagka ganito lang yung gagawin mo. Of course, you still need this. This is the, the minimum, minimum required effort that you need to, to do to get into tech. But you really need to be creative in landing that dream, lo- dream role. Hindi pwedeng mag-aasa ka lang sa resume. And one tip, huwag nyo, yung nga, di ba? Kasi nga, sinabi ko kanina, hindi ganun ka-importante yung certificates. You just focus on the, on, the, on the learnings. Instead of putting certificates on your, may pupunoy nyo yung, yung, yung resume nyo ng certificates, instead of, instead of doing that, place links to your projects. Mas maganda yung kasi projects really demonstrate your skills and your know-how. And yun ang magiging basihan ng, ng interviewer kung ano yung pag-uusapan nyo. Or ano yung mga etapa nyo sa'yo. Kasi pag-uusapan nyo yung project na yun. Mas, mas effective yun, in my view, instead of putting those certificates. Kasi ang dami certificates, hindi na, okay sana kung tipong yun, PRC certificate na regulated. But IT is not regulated. Mahirap siyang i-regulate. So that's not going to happen. And certificates, kung san-san lang naman makukuha yan, hindi ba? You have, we have no, no way of verifying them. So mas maganda yung projects yung ilagay nyo dyan. And yun na, yun nga. Be creative in landing that dream role. What do I mean? Itong ginagawa ko ngayon, itong, you know, building communities, building my brand, and being maingay sa social media, it's my way of advertising na, hey, I'm a web developer or I'm a JavaScript engineer. So, people have actually contacted me through social media to try to hire me because, you know, my, my name is out there. You know? I don't need to send resumes to companies. Hindi kailangan kasi sila yung lumalapit sa akin. They are the ones finding me. Instead of, you know, you trying hard to find these companies, let them find you. Maraming ways dyan, but I can't discuss na, dis, ano, kulang tayo sa oras. But, you know, uh, maybe some other time, or you can message me, or go to my podcast. I am not a real developer if I'm not writing code. This is a very bad myth. Dito ako medyo, ano eh, medyo pet peeve ko, personally. Because this this reeks of gatekeeping, and I hate gatekeeping. I'm an inclusive person. I, I, I like including everyone. Of course, syempre, uh, meron ding other side din yung, yung, yung pagiging scammer and uh, fraud, but that's a different thing. But in terms of being a developer, if you're creating solutions, for other people or for your employer, for your clients, if you're creating solutions with, uh, for them using tech, you're a developer because you're developing systems. Kung WordPress ang gamit mo to create software, you're a WordPress developer. If you're using no code, yung mga drag and drop na, na interface nila, you're a no code developer. So as long as you are building solutions using software, ano man yung software na yan, ano ba yung tool na yan, you are a developer. Prevalent to sa mga ano, sa mga graduates na they feel they need to protect their their field. What are you protecting, no? But again, <laughs> that's another another topic. Again, 
not because you're not writing code you're not you're not a developer you are a developer as long as you're providing value to clients and your employer using tech coding boot camps guarantee success there's a lot of boot camps that have sprouted in the past few years because of the trend of career shifting not a lot not a lot of them are not all of them are good so if you're um if you're thinking of get go, getting into a bootcamp, do your own research. Research yun na Because these bootcamps are not cheap. And some of them even uh, come with a bond. Parang medyo makukulong ka for a few years. Parang ganun. Hindi na makukulong sa ano. Ah. Uh, I mean, hindi ka pwedeng umalis to sa certain company for a few years. Ganun. So, of course, this is a myth. It can help, lalo na pag maganda yung bootcamp talaga. But it doesn't guarantee success. Nothing can guarantee success. Not even your diploma. Not even self-studying. Kahit sobrang sipag mo, baka yung circumstances o yung, 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 yung swerte medyo hindi naka-align. There's nothing that can guarantee success. You can only increase your chances of success. So, yeah, bootcamps can increase uh, your, your chances. Basta maganda yung bootcamp. But it doesn't mean that na nag-bootcamp ka and someone learn coding on their own time without going to bootcamp. Hindi ibig sabihin nun, lamang ka na sa kanila. Hindi ganun yan. May, may other ways of uh, circumventing things, you know. Maraming factors, eh. Maraming factors. But, you know, of course, if you're, if you're the type of learner na kailangan mo na structured na, na learning program, or if you're someone na medyo hindi mo kayang kontrolin ang sarili mo uh, into trying to learn something, maybe a bootcamp is good for you, is suitable for you. But it's not for everyone. Like, self-learning is not for everyone. Maybe nabagayan yan. I need to be good at math to learn coding. Another myth. Ito, madalas na takot ng mga tao kung bakit ayaw nila mag-aral ano, mag, uh, mag mag-code. Na kailangan daw ng math. No, not really. It can help. Kasi math is, you know, it helps you Think a certain way. But math is a skill. Coding is a skill. They are very separate, separate skills. And what's good about skills is you can train yourself to be good at that particular skill. And you can train yourself to be good at coding without being good at math. But eventually, of course, may mga times na kailangan din na applyan ng mathematical concepts. But for, you know, sa field ko, kunwari, hindi ko naman kailangan, bihirang-bihira. Even algorithms and data structures, hindi ko masyadong ginagamit sa, sa work because madalas yung mga problems sa, sa industry in the real world, na-solve na yan. Eh. May gumawa na ng solutions for that. Eh. Gagamitin mo na lang. But uh, there are times na, oh, of course, kailangan mo rin gumawa ng sarili, mo, sarili mong algorithm. Like, just this past few weeks, I've been writing algorithms for an hour search feature in Prospel. And I had to write those from scratch. Of course, I did research, din ako, but uh, those were really bespoke algorithms. You need, again, you don't need to be good at math and algorithms, but they can help you progress faster in the tech industry pagka marunong ka sa mga yan. Ito pa, sayang experience, career, or pinag-aralal ko pagka nag-shift ako into tech. Marami yan, yung mga ako, dati, di ba, electrical engineer, doctors, 
architects, civil engineers. Actually, sa mga kakilala ko sa nakilala ko during this career shifting journey, pwede na, pwede na kami bumuo ng ano eh, ng engineering firm eh kasi ang daming engineers na nag-shift into tech. Pero madalas ko rin marinig to. Sayang naman yung experience mo, sayang naman yung career mo, sayang naman yung pinag-aralan mo. I heard this from my friends nung ako yung nag-shift. I heard this from relatives, even from my parents. But the thing is, ano nga ba yung sayang? Why are we holding on to the past? Diba? If I wasn't happy with my current with my current career, pa't siya magiging sayang? Kung magiging masaya naman ako, doon sa pupuntahan ko. I chose to be in tech. And now, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying the fruits of my decision. Huwag kayong manghinayang sa nakaraan. You know? Just look forward. I mean, learn from the past. But huwag kayong manghinayang. Employers don't look at my social media profiles. This is a uh, major myth, major truth. Some employers do. Talagang mag-background check sila. Some don't. But you don't, you never know eh. Yung mga pinopost mo sa Facebook, sa Twitter, sa Instagram, you never know who's looking. Baka may contact ka pala na naghahanap ng developer. Tapos, eto ka, sobrang toxic mo sa online, uh, uh, online yung online presence mo sobrang toxic. So, makapaisip siya, I'm looking for a developer. This guy is a developer. This girl is a developer. Or, this girl is looking for for, for uh, developer work or tech uh, tech job. But, masaya ba ako maging katrabaho to? Matutuwa ba ako maging katrabaho siya kung ganyan siya katoxic? So, be very careful of the content you put out on social media. And it's been very beneficial sa akin eh. Kasi, there have been a lot of people trying to reach me, uh, reach out to me on social media, offering offering opportunities. Some of these opportunities pinapas ko sa ibang tao. Kasi nga, they see what I put out on social media. I use my, my brand, Kuya Dev, to put out positive messages on social media and, you know, to to broadcast to the world that, hey, I'm a pretty decent, hindi naman good or a great, I'm a pretty decent JavaScript engineer. Ganun. I should give up after X rejections. Myth. Even if you're a college graduate or a career shifter, you will experience a lot of rejections. Lalo na sa first job nyo. Yung first, first, at, uh, yung first dozens of attempts nyo na maka, maka penetrate into the tech industry. Mahirap talaga. Sabi ko nga nung, uh, earlier, the first job is the hardest to get. Of course, may mga nasinaswerte rin na sa first or second, third attempt pa lang, nakakuha na. But for the vast majority, sobrang hirap talaga. So, expect nyo na yun. Sanayin nyo na lang sarili nyo na ma-reject. Para, ano, di ba? But, use interviews, use the, the, the process to, to learn and to improve yourself in this, in, in this interviews. At ma, 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 mapalaki yung chance nyo na maland that. Maland nyo yung first tech role nyo. I should focus on the local job market. This is a big no-no. Wag. We can compete on the global market. Kahit nasa sa first job pa lang or first tech role pa lang, subukan nyo sa foreign market. And actually, mas madali pa sa experience ko kasi mas open sila eh, sa career shifters uh, as opposed to the local market na medyo traditional pa rin yung approach eh. Mas gusto pa rin nila na may degree. But some companies are learning and they're opening up their uh, hiring process to career shifters na. 
Failing tech exams means I'm not cut out for this. Again, tulad nung sinabi ko, um, rejections, you're going to experience a lot. But this, this is very specific. Na hindi porke bumagsak sa, sa, sa tech exam, hindi ka na magaling na developer. It's not that. Actually, there's a lot of developers globally na medyo nagagalit na sa gantong approach. Yung algorithms and data, data structures na way of hiring people, yung pinapa-exams mo talaga ng, minsan, ano pa eh, la, uh, board, uh, whiteboard, ano pa, interview pa, talagang sobrang pressured ka. And people are saying na this is very anxiety-inducing. It doesn't really reflect what the actual job really is. And companies are beginning to recognize this. Kami, hindi namin ginagawa to. Ako, ayoko na bibigyan ng tech, tech exams. More, uh, when, when I do interviews, more, um, ano lang, conversational lang madalas. I seldom give uh, even yung take-home projects. Madalas, hindi ko na nang ginapagawa yun. Eh. Parang ayoko masayang din yung oras nung, nung applicant. Eh. So, this is actually changing. But, ito nga, keep this in mind. If you fail tech exams, huwag yung damdamin. It's part of it. It's part of the process. Aral na lang kayo. You know? Maraming libro dyan about algorithms and even specifically on tech exams. Practice lang. I need to master con concepts before applying. Another myth. Um, madalas si tanong sa akin to. Eh. How will I know if I'm ready to apply to jobs? Ang lagi ko sinasabi, you won't. You will never feel you're ready. So, I just, I just advise people to just apply. Ano ngayon kung ma-reject ka, di ba? Just, ako, nung, nung, nung nag apply ako before, at the start, yung, yung, I was trying to shift careers, at the start of the process, nung, ano, nung, nung, nung process, nasasaktan pa ako eh, nakaka-down na, nare-reject ako maraming beses. But eventually, na-realize ko, gawin ko na lang practice to, di ba? Pinag-practice ko yung mga interviewers. Yung mga, yung nag interview sa akin, sobrang naging ano, sobrang naging kampante ko with the interview process. Binabaliktad ko yung interview. Minsan ako yung nagtatanong ng hard questions. No? I throw them, ano, off their, ano, off their, off their game. Uh, ganun na yung ginagawa ko ng mga na nag enjoy na lang ako and you know whenever they tell me they're moving on with another candidate or hindi ako pumasok or na-reject ako I ask them why I ask them what is what, it, what, what, what is it that I can improve on para ma-increase pa yung chances ko to, to land that first tech role I am going to be paid to write code. This is a huge mess again. Parang wala yata tayo naging truth eh, no? <laughs> anyway, this is the last one. I am going to be paid to write code. This is a large myth because you are not going to be paid to write code. If you think that way, makakomoditize ka. Meaning na you are very easy to replace kasi everyone can write code. You have to learn or you have to, you have to find what value you are providing to a company. You have to know that. You have to discover that. And I can't tell that or I can't say what, what, what value you can uh, provide uh, yourself. But uh, yun lang. Yun lang ang mga papapayo ko rito. You have to learn or you have to discover what value you can provide to a company. You are not paid to write code. You are paid to create solutions or to create value. Nagkataon lang na code yung way natin to create that value. But not necessarily eh. Kasi minsan, the best code is the code that you didn't, you didn't write. No? Kasi minsan, mas, mas, nakaka, mas, malaki, mas nakakasira pa or mas nakakalala pa pag sinulat natin yung code na yun eh. Parang ako, madalas kong gawin yan eh. Kailangan ba talaga natin i-code yan? Bakit ko tinatanong yan? Kasi, does it really provide value for the amount of effort that I'll be putting it 
putting in to solve that problem, you know. So, you know, huwag niyong, huwag niyong kakalimutan to, hindi kayo binabayaran para lang magsulat ng, ano, ng code. You are being paid to create value. So, that's it. Uh, I hope na medyo may mga napulot kayo sa mga uh, sinabi ko. So, let me just invite you over uh, to our community. We are Tech Career Shifter. Um, ito yung link, techcareershifter.com. It will lead you to our Facebook group. So, we are a community of Filipino career shifters and self-learners who support each other's transition into the tech industry. So, if you are members of other uh, uh, tech communities, and I suggest that you are, that you start being a member of uh, a tech community, do join us. And we are a very positive and very inclusive group. So, again, um, I want to introduce uh, PROSPO. Actually, we are a partner of UST. If you're not aware na may careers directory kayo, uh, you do. Uh, it's, it's careers UST, careers.ust.prospo.com. So, kami yung nagpa-power ng, ng platform nyo. Kami yung uh, the people behind this platform. So, what, these, uh, what this platform does is provide you the, hopefully, we can provide you with the uh, best start to your career. That's our mission kasi. We want uh, graduates and career starters to have that uh, best start to their careers. Kasi nung ako, nung, nung nagsisimula ako with my career, I didn't know what my options were. So through this platform, hopefully we can, you know, we can solve that uh, question for you. So again, that's careersust.prospel.com. If you're still not a, a member yet, uh, do sign up. It's free. It's, uh, it's free for all uh, UST students. Then, um, of course, sabi ko nga, hindi lahat ng topics kaya kong i-discuss dito lahat. Ang daming, ang daming insights dito, actually. Kinondense ko lang into, uh, what, uh, one hour uh, uh, talk. So, you can follow me on on social media by, you know, nung links ko, andyan lang sa follow.kuya.dev. Andun lahat nung links ko, uh, yung podcast ko, my Facebook page, and Twitter, andun lahat. So, please, uh, if you're interested in uh, knowing or my thoughts or listening to my podcast, just go to follow.kuya.dev. So with that, I uh, thank you again. It's been an honor uh, being a speaker uh, in this event. So ito, uh, medyo pampa, pampagana. This is me uh, last week in Boracay, uh, working remotely uh, with Ayan, may red horse pa nga sa tabi, di ba? Uh, this is uh, my... Uh, I was on workcation with my wife uh, last week. Uh, uh, yun nga, uh, working remotely for, uh, for, 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 uh, for Prosper. So with that, uh, I open the floor for questions. Uh, thank you.